This is Twit. One of the things that I want to do before we get into the real good stuff tonight, I want to talk about one of my favorite items, and it's very old. It's a grid dip meter. And to a lot of people, they're going to say, what? What is it? Why is it? Why do we need it? Well, it, it, to me, I, it, it's one of the most vital tools that I ever had in the early days, and I still use it. Uh, and we're going to show you a little bit about what the grid dip meter does. This is a Millen, which I always consider to be the best one. There's a lot of different ones out there, but this was the uh, it was the Rolls Royce. So let's roll that video and let you see what the grid dip meter is all about. This is a very important piece if you're designing. Here's a little <clears throat> two tube transmitter, and. This is something when you look at it and you say, oh, wow, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, you can. Look at that. There's two tubes, just a few uh, resistors and capacitors. But tonight we're, gonna we're going to focus on the tank coil, the coil and the capacitor that actually tune the, uh, the transmitter for what you, where you're going to be. Well, you got to know what that coil is. So you got to wind it. Take a piece of solid wire. And real sophisticated, <laughs> I use the end of a screwdriver or whatever. I just kind of judge how how big this is, that this coil is going to end up being. And uh, <clears throat> that's why the grid dipper is so important. Make about four or five turns of that little guy and put it across the capacitor. And you'll find out if it's going to be where you want it to be. Uh, I wanted this to come out around six meters. And so we soldered it all up. And now... How do you know where it is? You use the grid dip meter. And what that is, there's a tube in there. And when the resonant coil is passed through the frequency, you will see the grid of the tube reduce this it's called the grit dipper now there's all these different coils you saw me with there we're going to pick out the one for that centers around uh, 50 megacycles 50 megahertz for the uh, old crowd and then you see where uh, we have some uh, some reading on the meter and when we put that coil and we note that these are all different colors so the bands in there you can know what frequency we're on when we take that around 50 megacycles and put it up next to the coil as we vary the capacitor see what happens it actually i always thought of it just sucks the energy from the tube and it resonates thus grid dip and when you get it down to the minimum go look at the scale and it'll tell you where you are um Wow, that was pretty good. I just guessed that, and it came out at 50 megahertz. This is another one. Kenwood made a really nice one. And then you can see some of these at HamFest. Uh, they all have an earphone in them, so you can use it to listen to your signal. It's kind of neat. Uh, it, it really was great for AM. And the Kenwood has all the coils in that little box in the end. And a little headphone that you can listen to the signal if you want to uh, use it as a field strength meter. <clears throat> Got a little antenna like on it. Well, that's really neat because you can take that and put it in the circuitry and check to see if there's signal there. So you can use this as a signal tracer also. It's a very useful instrument. A good dip meter, I, I couldn't do without it. And it, it, it's got so many uses, but uh, I don't see a lot of them lately. And uh, I thought we should talk about it a little. I see them at HamFest all the time. And uh, at the end of HamFest, they still lay there because guys don't know. And there's all different size coils and things that you could take, uh, take the capacitors, hook them up, and uh, see what frequency they are. The, uh, they have different coil, different size coils for all of that. But that just a little treatise on a grid dip meter, and if you see them around at a ham fest, grab one, experiment. And um, we're, we're, I want to get into some stuff about building a little one and two tube tr tr transmitter. It's really f easy and a lot of fun. And it, it's what's made this hobby what it is to me today and why I'm able to do a lot of the things in my uh, professional side because I learned so much from building.
And uh, then from there, hmm, took it and away we went. And uh, George, I bet you have a grid dip meter, don't you? I actually don't, Bob. Well, I sort of do. Uh, you know, the MFJ 259B analyzers uh, mm -hmm. sell or, or have some accessories. You can buy the little coil packs that you add to yeah. that antenna analyzer and use it as a grid dip meter. I'm not sure if it's good uh -huh. as a real thing, but it works. Yeah, yeah. Well, as long as it works, you have to have some type of a of a meter or a, a tool to find out what frequency that you're working with, and that that works too. 